Hey guys, what's going on? So today we're going to be taking a look at the Bluetti Elite 200 V2 Power Bank. This is a new beefy power bank from Bluetti with a lot of capability and I'm super excited about it. I'm going to walk you through the unit. We'll talk general use, a brief overview of all the ports and what's included with the product. Now I've tested it for efficiency, so you'll learn about that and exactly what to expect from the capacity and the inverters. We'll also take a look at the Bluetti app options, the UPS functionality, we'll do some coffee making tests, and you'll see who this battery is really best for. I'll show you some of the ways that I'll personally be utilizing the unit as well as a drone enthusiast. For full disclosure, Bluetti did send this battery bank out to me to test and keep in order to review for you guys, but I'm free to test it out the way I want. Let's walk through the basics. At the heart of the Bluetti Elite 200 V2 is a 2,073 watt hour battery capable of 2,600 watt output. Now it's a LiFo 4 battery and it's rated for at least 6,000 cycles and has a 17 year expected life lifespan of the cells. We also have a DC or PV input port that's here and this is for your solar panel or if you want to plug it into your car and charge it up that way. The DC output is 12 volts and 10 amps. This is your classic cigarette lighter style port. Uh, we also get two USB-C ports on the DC side. Each of them is 100 watts each and there's also two USB-A at 15 watts. We've got four AC inputs with 20 amps max, and we've got a pure sine wave inverter. So it's healthy for all of your electronics to get power from this. Now on the side of the unit, we have an AC input port to charge it up from a wall outlet using a three prong connector. This is great. All you need is a cord. You don't need to think about bringing any power bricks with you. There's also a grounding screw here. If you're the kind of person that likes to ground these units for extra safety, I personally have never used this. Last but not least, we have a 250 volt AC or 20 amp protection circuit reset button. I wanted to find the actual battery capacity or output that you can expect after the inverters and step downs transfer power to check the efficiency. Now I tested the DC side first and I used a 150 watt battery load tester that tracked the watt hour usage from 100% all the way down to 0%. The result I got was 1,841.4 watt hours total on the DC side. Now, if you divide 1,841 watt hours by the total capacity, which is 2,073 watt hours, you get a total of 0.888 or an efficiency of 88 or 89 rounded up on the DC side. So you can expect 89% of the total capacity if you use the DC side of this unit. I tested the AC side with this meter, again, letting the unit run all the way from 100% down to zero using a space heater. The result was 1,945 watt hours. And if we use the same calculations to divide 1,945 by 2,073, we get 0.938 or a total of 93.8% efficiency on the AC side. So on the DC side, you're gonna get an 88.8% .8 efficiency rating. And on the AC side, you're gonna get 93.8%. These, these results are not only within, but actually a bit above industry standards. One thing you're probably wondering is, why would the DC side be less than AC? You would think, since it's a DC battery, that the AC side should be worse from the, you know, conversion. But we need to remember that this is a 12 volt DC socket. So there is a step down, inver uh, step down conversion in play and from a higher voltage LiFo 4 battery. It's just gonna take more to step that down. Let's talk a little bit about weight. Now it's got decent handles on it, but it is heavy. This thing weighs in at 53 pounds. So I need both hands to carry it. Maybe I just have weak arms, but you know, this thing is heavy and you're just gonna have to keep that in mind. All right, so let's take a look at what you get with the product and pay attention because this is actually important. Don't skip this. You get your AC charge cable, you get your solar cable, but you don't get a cable to charge from the car. If you want a cable like this to charge from your car's cigarette port, you're gonna have to buy this separately. Just a warning, some people will buy these thinking yeah, they get this and this is not included. 
but gotta buy it separately. One of the most power hungry appliances you have in your home is actually your coffee maker. These things need a lot of power to heat up your daily coffee. So today we're gonna be using the Elite 200 to make us a nice pot. I've got a fully filled Ninja coffee maker here and we're going to start from 100 and just see how much does it take out of the battery to make one full cycle of coffee. A Ninja coffee maker like this is gonna use a little bit above a thousand watts coming in at just 1,124. Our coffee is just now finishing up, nice, hot, and fresh. Still pulling only about 1,100 watts, but it, it pretty much sat that way the entire time. And that's the, that's the beep, our coffee is done. So at the end of it, we use 10% to make about, I think I didn't fill it up totally all the way. I saw the, the level sitting at around probably 11 cups of coffee. So 10% to make 10 cups, that sounds pretty good. This is cool. Oh, oh, it's, it's, it's great. It, it's actually, it's definitely better when you make it with the Elite 200. For the next test, we're gonna give the Keurig a shot. I've got a K-cup, standard size, and we're gonna use the single cup of coffee mug size mode and see how it does. Now already, we've heated it up. It's, oh my goodness, 1400 watts. That's a lot more on the initial startup. One standard size cup of coffee, we used 2% out of the hour Elite 200. So to recap, whether you're making coffee with something like the Ninja or a Keurig, the Elite 200 is gonna be able to handle it no problem at all. Peak watt usage on the Ninja was 1,100 or 1,150, and peak watt usage on the Keurig was about 1,400 watts. With the Keurig, we can make 2% from the battery makes one standard size cup. So you can make up to 50 cups with one entire battery charge of the Elite 200. And on the Ninja, you could make 100 cups at least because it was 10% to make around 10 or 11 cups. So in short, if you're camping for a weekend and you want to use your full size coffee maker or your pod maker, this can handle it no problem whatsoever. With the free Luetti app for iOS or Android, you can manage your Elite 200 V2 over Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. The app immediately gives you a bunch of status elements such as the number of watts in, number of watts out, whether you're connected to the grid or not. You can tick on and off the DC output or the AC output with the switches here rather than using the physical switches. On the device, you've got the time remaining. In the advanced settings area, we can set what mode we're using. This is the standard UPS mode and that comes enabled by default and changes it into an uninterruptible power supply. Now the charging modes, we've got standard, silent, and turbo. In the turbo mode, you can use 1800 watts. So if you do use that turbo mode to get this thing charged in just a little over an hour, uh, make sure that you plug into a sufficient wall socket. Everything else is pretty standard. You can set this thing to go to sleep for 30 seconds, for a minute, or never. And last but not least, firmware upgrade. I recommend when you get this, go to the firmware upgrade section and just to make, sh just make sure you're running all the latest software. I had to do a bunch of updates to mine before I did this video. One of the coolest features of the Elite 200 V2 is its ability to run an uninterruptible power supply or UPS mode. In the UPS mode, while connected to the grid, everything passes through, but should power be lost, the battery will pick up where the grid left off. To demonstrate that, I've actually set up some lamps so you can watch the switching in real time and cut the power. And you will have seen that flash there. The device I have up top didn't lose power. And then it notices that the grid picked up again and it stopped and put the pass through back on. And then one more time, I'm gonna shut power off. And again, you saw that flicker, but everything retained power. One of the practical, but maybe less obvious ideas that you can use the UPS mode for is for your 3D printer. Now, this is the Bamboo Lab A1. I have it connected to the Elite 200 in the UPS mode. It's currently in grid. If I go ahead and pull the AC port, it now switches over and it is still printing, 
went over with no issues at all. As you can see, it's using 75 watts, anywhere between 75 to 200, bouncing around. I'm seeing estimates of anywhere between 15.4 to 10 hours, depending on how much watt, how many watts are being used at any given moment. I could rip this out on the fly, plug it in, and know that my print is gonna survive at least a couple hours or more of a power outage. Now I know some of you are gonna say, but John, my 3D printer has a resume from power outage option. And mine does too. The Bamboo Lab can resume if you have a power flicker and keep on printing. Those functions are really only good to resume a print for a momentary loss of power, maybe no more than three to five minutes. If you do have an extended outage, once the filament cools, it's game over. The ability to use the Elite 200 with the beefy battery pack as a backup for my Bamboo Lab A1 is an ace feature. So for my final test, we're gonna see how long the Elite 200 V2 can run my refrigerator. I have a pretty standard style double door kitchen refrigerator with a freezer. Uh, it runs at about 34 degrees in there, so I keep things pretty cold. The house thermostat is generally on 70 degrees. And uh, it is 6.30 at night, so we're gonna check back a full 24 hours later. Currently, it's reporting that my refrigerator is using about 100 watts-ish, and we're reporting about 27 hours of total runtime from the Bluetti, but the compressor is gonna kick on and off, so we'll see what the final percentage shakes out to be. Just a quick check in here at the 50% mark. We've got 16.2 hours remaining and it's about 8 a.m. I expect this to still have a little bit of charge by 6 o'clock, 6.30. And we're back. 24 hours later, it is 6.30-ish, and we've got 13% remaining on the battery with three and a half hours remaining for the life of the unit. So I can run my refrigerator and protect it for 24 hours off of one full charge. And that was with really not trying to preserve anything in the refrigerator. I mean, I, we were still getting water, opening and closing the door. There was no you know, attempt to keep the door closed to, uh, preserve, to preserve it in any way. So it's nice to know that I can protect this thing for 24 hours. Now, my thought now is that I should really buy some solar panels for this thing because I could keep this charged at a faster rate then my refrigerator would be able to use it all up in one day and potentially just keep my fridge going perpetually as long as I can get sun. I've got the link to the Blue Eddy and the solar panels that they sell for it down in the video description below. So since I'm a drone guy, one of the main ways that I'll be using this is to charge my drone batteries. Now, this thing can charge far more drone batteries than I'm capable of flying in one day. But whenever I go out, I'm usually always running something else. For example, I have this 13 inch fan here and I like to run that constantly while I'm flying. I can plug that in, let that go the entire time I'm flying, keep myself cool and I don't have to worry about it. Even though these batteries, for example, for the Mavic are only 40 watt hours, I mean, there's, you're gonna get a ton of charges out of this. Uh, I'm usually not the only one charging. When I'm flying with friends, others will plug into my power supply. And although my EB3A has been really trusty, after a few hours, this thing can be depleted quite quickly. So all of us can charge from this and honestly, we'll hardly use any of it. So for groups, for long events, for things like that, where you're gonna be parked in one spot and you wanna ensure that no matter what you do, you're, you're gonna have enough capacity, the Elite 200 V2 is gonna deliver that for you. In conclusion, if you need something with high power draw requirements or you need something that's gonna be chewing through a lot of power throughout the day and you need it to last as long as possible, the Elite 200 V2 is a good choice. I've been using the Bluetti EB3A for two years now. Bluetti also sent this out to me to a review, but I have probably put tons of cycles through this. It's been really, 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 really reliable for me. And I would not expect any less from this. This thing is gonna come in handy for potential power outages, going through prints, as I mentioned, and all sorts of other scenarios that having a big, powerful bank like this is gonna come in handy for you. 
What are you doing in there?